Okay, this is the second in our series of videos about MozMod and in this video we will be introducing policies and in particular discussing the definitional policies and introducing the tax and benefit policies. First I want to go back to the user interface which we looked at in the last session and look at that in a little bit more detail. As I've already indicated, the policies are listed in the second column in the user interface. That's their actual names. Um, the policies are usually named for the output variable. Um, they're clearly described in the comment column um, and classified between definitional policies that begin with DEF, tax policies that begin with TAX, social insurance policies that begin with SIC, and benefit policies that begin with BEN. Now, the ordering of the policies is important, and that ordering is called the spine, and then you can see there's numbers running from 1 through to 18, and for each of the policies and that's the order in which they're simulated. Um, the order sometimes doesn't make any difference but for some policies you need to have the result of a previous simulation before you can simulate the policy you're looking at. So the order is crucial and needs thinking about. So for example if a policy uh, to give some kind of social benefit uh, required that they, uh, the person wasn't receiving some other kind of social benefit then it would be have to be placed after the other social benefit so that um, the simulation could make a check to see whether it had already allocated um, uh, the previous benefit in which case that might disqualify you from the subsequent benefit. I hope that's clear. But basically ordering is important and that ordering list is referred to as the spine. As I indicated there are three types of policy. There are definitional policies such as the first policy up rating. Um, there are tax policies both direct like income tax and um, uh, simplified tax but there are also indirect taxes like VAT and then there are benefits in, in which case mainly the direct social support program and I also indicated that there are social insurance um, policies too. I'm going to go through the definitional policies in more detail and when I do so I will actually flip to the model and uh, talk briefly about each one of them. So there are uprating factors. That's uh, important because the data set um, is a data set for 2008-9 yet we've got policies for 2015. Um, so data from the data set needs to be uprated in various ways. There are income policies uh, income concepts, excuse me, um, those are defined in income lists and we'll go through those in a bit more detail. There's a definitional policy on tax units and tax units describe the composition of households and if there are um, special definitions of other groupings within the household they're contained in these tax units. So a couple may be defined in a tax unit. A family as a subset of a household may be defined in a tax unit, etc. Constants are, um, as the word <laughs> indicates, things that don't change within the model. It's where values of, of, of uh, um, benefits are often put. It's where tax bans um, and tax rates may be put. It makes it much easier to update the model if you've got um, those figures um, as constants rather than hard-coded into the model. 
and then there are two expenditure variable policies um, relating uh, respectively to uh, value-added tax um, expenditure and excise duty expenditure. And then there's a standard output at individual level um, uh, um, definitional policy. Now, uh, one and four, that's uprating factors and constants definitions will need probably annual uprating. I mean, certainly the uprating will, and often the constants will. Two and six may need amendment um, if a new benefit or tax is introduced. So that's the income lists and uh, the um, output policy. The definitional um, tax unit will rarely need uh, 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 um, amending. Basically they're set um, uh, to reflect uh, um, arrangements in, in the particular country. And of course um, the expenditure variables will only need amendment with the introduction of a new data set. Now I'm going to take those one at a time and talk in a little bit more detail. So if we look at uprating factors, this policy inflates values in the input data set to bring them up to date and is used with the uprating indices uh, country tool. So the, as I said, the underpinning data set for MOSMOD is currently 2009 and therefore for 2015 all values need to be adjusted for inflation. Default inflator is the CPI, that's what will be used for things that aren't specifically specified. But other specific inflators can be specified for particular values. For example, earnings are inflated by a wage inflator calculated by looking at annual changes in the mini minimum wage averaged across all, all sectors. Now let's go and look at the model and look at um, uprating factors. So here's the model, and if we look at the model the first policy is uprating, and we'll just look at it here. So it, the data set is specified, this is the data set we're working on, and then the default factor, and then a special factor for both um, uh, 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 for, for, for wage and self-employment income. Now, they're referred to as um, a factor that begins with a dollar sign, a bit like a constant, as we'll see. Now, they're actually, in the country tools, there's an uprating indices section, which is where you define these factors. And the factors are defined here. You can see that there's a CPI total, CPI food, non-food, general wage inflator, CPI for alcohol, tobacco, and fuel. And these are differently used in, in, in different... Um, parts of the model, but they're all contained together in an uprating indices uh, uh, um, section. And additional years can be added, years can be deleted. Um, and that manages, if you like, uprating. So that's where those values for, for these um, uh, three factors that are in our uprate policy are stored. Close that and go back to the model. Oh, sorry, the presentation. Okay. Um, the next is I've mentioned constants, and the constants um, contained in MOSMOD um, are shown actually in this screenshot. Um, they mainly actually relate at the moment to the rates for. Uh, uh, um, uh, excise duty, um, VAT, etc. Now, that doesn't mean they're the only constants that exist within the model. There are other constants, and one of the uh, um, tasks on this year's agenda is to move more of the hard-coded amounts within the model into constants. Now, I mentioned 
income concepts or income lists. There are many different income concepts required to simulate taxes and benefits. So, for example, the income components included in the means test for social transfers or the income components that make up taxable income. So the policy ILDEF underscore MZ specifies which income components relate to each income concept or income list. It's not necessary often to amend this particular policy, um, as I indicated earlier, but it's something that, that one needs to be um, aware of. So here are the income lists in um, uh, MosMod itself, and you can see that it covers um, taxable income used for um, non-employment income, taxable income uh, used for uh, uh, um, PAYE, for simplified tax, etc, etc. I'll move to the model to actually show you these in more detail. So if we look at the income lists, first of all, income list taxable income used in personal income tax for 2015 for non-employment income if no simplified tax is payable. Um, when we look through the model f um, uh, um, in the final video, um, I, I will um, explain that in more detail, but um, important to know that the income list is, is slightly different in cases where um, uh, there's no simplified tax. Basically it includes self-employment income. So here is the income list. You've got um, uh, employment from uh, income from employment which isn't relevant because that's dealt with directly in the model. Um, there's other income, income from property, income from agriculture, income from self-employment and income from in from interest. Now what, what an income list does is basically um, adds, if there's a plus sign, those incomes together and puts them in that uh, income list, which is a bit like a composite variable is, is the way to think of it, I think. Um, for some um, in, in income lists, if you put a minus as opposed to a plus, then it will subtract that from the total. Okay, so there are income lists that uh, um, for, for, for simplified tax um, where, where you have self-employment turnover added to agricultural turnover um, for the simplified tax um, income list, for example. And then some income lists are actually standard income lists that are defined, for example, original income um, and um, disposable income, etc. Again, these familiarity with these will um, come with familiarity with the model, and in my final video, I will go through all of the income lists. Okay, now back to the presentation, as now we want to talk about tax units. Tax units are groups of people, I sort of indicated that, um, individual, couple, family, household. Family and household may be synonymous in Mozambique. In some countries um, uh, they're quite closely defined and, and don't include necessarily all members of a household. And tax units determine who's included during um, the policy simulation, for example, Personal income tax is calculated now at the individual level. Um, one of the means tests for the direct social support program depends on per capita household income being below a certain amount. So that's calculated at the household level. And these levels are specified and have to be specified um, in each policy. Um, and um, But not, not usually necessary to alter these definitions. So I'll just quickly again shift to the model itself and give you a sight of the 
so-called tax unit definition. Um, and so, actually, in MOSMOD, we have a household, as you'd expect, that's all members of the household. Um, we don't have a family definition in MOSMOD um, in the conventional way, but we do have a particular kind of family um, that we use in some policies, and we have obviously individual, but we also have couple. So these are um, one, two, three, four different um, tax units that are defined. And the tax units will, will, will say something about, and I'll give you an example, they're sometimes quite complicated to, to grasp, but this particular family um, uh, um, unit includes, it's a subgroup of household, it includes um, uh, um, dependent relatives, it has a condition for partners and a condition for children. Back to the presentation. All of this will become clearer as one uses the model, but as I said, this, these particular concepts are not um, likely to need um, amendment very often. So we then move to tax policies. We have a policy for income tax, simplified tax, value-added tax, and excise duties. So two uh, direct uh, tax policies, income tax and simplified tax, and two indirect value-added tax and excise duties. And these can be extremely complex, and indeed income tax is, is very complex in uh, Mozambique. Simplified tax, on the other hand, is very straightforward, and they're only likely to need amendment if, for example, we're testing out new ways of financing new benefits, or if the tax system is radically o overhauled. Um, I'll go just quickly to indicate the tax policies. Let me start with the, uh, the straightforward turnover tax. The turnover tax is um, a, a, a tax for people in self-employment whose turnover is less than um, 2.5 million metacals a year and it's a very straightforward and, and simple tax. Um, the uh, person, often an informal trader or, or, or whatever, doesn't have to keep accounts, they're simply charged 3% on their actual turnover. It's a very straightforward policy. The income tax, on the other hand, is a much more complex policy. This is the PAYE um, income tax policy. And as you can see, if I fully expand it, it actually starts here. There's actually quite a lot of, of computations um, which uh, conclude down here. Um, no need to get baffled by this at this stage. Again, with experience of the model, all of these and, and, and method, uh, um, what do I want to say, um, clear thinking, these policies can be perfectly well understood by anyone that can understand simple formulas. They really are basically simple conditions of entitlement and simple formulae. So really nothing to get um, concerned about and, and probably um, will require quite infrequent amendment. Okay, moving on to benefit policies, we've got really <clears throat> two main ones. The direct social support program and the basic social support program. And we're going to cover these in a future session, so I won't mention more at this stage. 
I talked about the spine, and it's worth repeating. It's a list of policies simulated by MozMod. Each policy is numbered and ordered in the main window, and policies are executed in the order um, by the program itself. So it's imperative, for example, that policies which depend on information generated by an earlier policy are positioned um, uh, um, after that policy. And that's what I was um, indicating uh, earlier. So I think the activity associated with this particular presentation is to explore the model, identifying different types of policy and becoming familiar with the definitional policies which form the basic framework of the model. And then in the next session we will look at um, social benefit policies in more detail and indeed in that session we will look at the construction of um, each policy in terms of functions and parameters. And, and, and that's all for this session. Thank you.